Okay. I want to say thanks to each and every one of you for being here today. Um, it's going to be a great day. Uh, I'm going to go through um, what I consider to be the very heart of my material. And uh, people ask me a lot, they say, you put out a lot of material on your website. What is the main thing? If, if, you had a, if you had to tell me the main thing that I should check out, if I check out nothing else that's up there, what would it be? And I always tell them the same thing. It's the material on natural law. If, uh, if nothing else, that's the material that you need to understand deeply. So that's what we're going to be covering here today uh, in an extended uh, presentation format. I want to go through uh, a few things before we actually get started. So I call this section before we begin. And uh, the word begin is actually important here because that's really what this presentation is actually about. It's initiation. This is an initiation into really, really deep esoteric material that has been hidden from humanity for millennia. So I just want to ask people before we get started, how many of you are new or relatively new to my work? By a show of hands, please. That's excellent. This is great. That is great news. I am so glad to hear that. Okay? I, what I actually didn't want is to come here and talk to a bunch of people who are already totally f familiar with my work and have already heard it. So this is great. Okay? Um, how many of you here today feel that the human condition and life on earth for humanity right now is tolerable just the way that it is by a show of hands? That's also pretty good because if that was the case, I was going to say, there's nothing for you here today. There's the door. <laughs> okay? So that's good. That We're all hungry for change. Uh, one of the things, one of the big complaints I hear about uh, my work uh, when I check in on forums or something or read some YouTube comments, many people will say, there's nothing new here. I've heard this before somewhere else. Uh, this person covers this. I've read this in this book. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have news for you. There is nothing new here. I am not going to present anything new. I am not going to present anything that has not actually been in existence and will continue to be in existence. I'm not making up new material. I, I call myself, I, I would refer to myself, Art uh, said it the other day, actually uh, yesterday when we were having dinner. He, he said, I consider you an aggregator of material. And I love that term. I, I, I love that description of what I do. I, I am an aggregator. I bring things together into a tapestry and then help to explain it in simple and easy to understand terms so that people can readily absorb it, take it in, and then do something with that information. So you will not be seeing or hearing anything new here today, okay? As the old saying goes in, in, in all of the old mystery traditions, there is nothing new under the sun. And what that phrase actually means, many people don't know what that phrase means. It means that the truth, it, it is singular and eternal. Truth has always been here among us, and it will always be, be here. It is our perception that must be aligned with it. So there's nothing new you're going to hear today, okay? It is, these are eternal truths that have always been here among us. Um, another aspect I want to cover before we get started is about my presentation style. This is another thing that I get a lot of complaints about, and it's something that I have no intention of changing. Okay, My presentation style has been described by some as extremely intense and at times even combative. This is a word many people will use to describe my presentation style. Some of you here today are very likely to be angered by some of the things you may hear me say during the duration of this seminar. And I say, so be it. That's okay. If you get angry, that's okay. The fact of the matter is that truth itself, by its very nature, is belligerent. And I'll actually be uh, putting up a quote to that, to that nature uh, later on in the presentation. The reason truth is belligerent is because it actually is, is at war. It's at war with the lie. It's at war with deception. It's at war with mind control. So truth can be belligerent. Many people don't want to hear it when they, when they first encounter it. So um, I tell people all the time, I don't do this, I don't present this information, okay, to be liked. I don't do this to make friends, okay? I'm not interested in making a whole bunch of new friends. If it happens, that's great. 
okay? But that's not the reason I do what I do. I don't do this to be popular. I don't do this to make money. It's not a popularity contest. Telling people many things that they don't want to hear is not going to make you popular or it's not going to make you a whole lot of new friends, okay? So those aren't the reasons I do what I do. To be honest, and I, I tell people this and sometimes they get upset by just hearing this, I don't even really want to do this, okay? I don't want to do this with my life. I don't want to do this with my time, okay? As I already know, understand, and live the information I'm going to present. So I, I get this. I know this, okay? I don't need to keep going over this over and over and over again for my own entertainment, okay? The reason that I actually do this is because I recognize that in a time of such overwhelming ignorance of this critical information, this information which is capable of saving humanity from its current condition, all right? The fact that I do already understand this information places me in a position of moral obligation and responsibility. That's why I do what I do. I'm in a position of moral obligation to speak this information to other people in an effort to help to get them to understand it and live it as well. And that is the reason I do this. Every person here today who wishes to take real world value, practical value from this seminar here today, I'm going to ask them to make a deliberate and conscious effort to do two things. The first is try to set aside, and to the extent that you are capable of doing so, your perceptions of me as the presenter. Okay, And this includes things like how you think I look, how you think I dress, the sound of my voice, uh, you know, my mannerisms, etc. Try to set those things aside to the extent that you're able to do it. And I know that's difficult for some. And I say this because paying attention to such trivialities will detract your own mental focus away from the information that is being presented today. And that's the worst thing that could happen. Because it's the information that is important, not me. Try to ignore me and focus on the content. All right. The second thing I ask people to try to do is to be consciously aware of any of your own impulses that you may have here today to immediately reject the information that is being presented in this seminar based solely upon your own initial, initial emotional reaction, your initial emotional response to this information. Okay. Th this is a logical fallacy. Okay, you cannot think with the emotions. So if you hear something you don't like or that angers you, that's okay. Feel the emotion. But don't just immediately say that can't be true. It's and don't and don't believe me either. It's about checking it. It's about a process of truth discovery. It's about doing your own due diligence and actually researching this material. Okay, But if you try to gauge the veracity, meaning the truthfulness of this information, solely based upon how it makes you feel when hearing it, you are committing a logical fallacy. Okay, So I ask people to try, to try as much as possible to suspend immediate reactions of disbelief Okay, and saying, no, I don't want to accept that, no, it can't be true, based on how something may make you feel that you hear today. That's very important to keep in mind. And lastly, this information, the entire seminar, is a tapestry. Okay, it's like pieces of a huge jigsaw puzzle. All right, it is meant to be seen and taken as a whole in its entirety. Now, I know I'm asking a lot here, too, because it's going to be a long day. Okay, And my goal here, my work here, is to keep your interest and your attention and your focus throughout the entire course of this seminar. And that's a challenging thing to do. But what I'm asking people is, you have to try to see it as a whole. Because if you, if, if you took the time to be here, and you gave a monetary donation to be here, I'm highly recommending that you stay for the whole duration of the seminar. There's a reason for that you're only going to get the full tapestry, especially if you're new to my work, by hearing this information in its entirety, okay? So if you don't do that, you'll probably not recognize the patterns, which is what this is all about. That's what this day is all about, pattern recognition, okay? 
that are, that are inherent to this tapestry of information. And more likely than not, you'll have wasted the time that you took to be here today and wasted the money that you spent to be here today. So I don't want anybody to waste their time and their money and their attention, I, and I don't think you do either. So that's why I, I'm asking people, stay for the whole thing. You'll get the maximum value out of this seminar if you stay for its duration. So with that having been said, let's jump into the material. This presentation is called Natural Law, the real law of attraction and how to apply it in your life. And I, I emphasize that term, real law of attraction. Many people will be familiar with the new age variants of the so-called law or laws of attraction. And this is going to differ quite widely from what people have heard in the new age community and the, in the new age movement regarding what the law or laws of attraction are. These are the real laws of attraction you're going to be hearing today and hopefully understanding today. So let's start in. The first section is about teachability. The teachability of the student, okay? How is, does a student place themselves in the best position to learn? An individual's teachability or their ability to learn by way of being taught by someone else is extremely dependent upon the open-mindedness or closed-mindedness of the individual being taught. Low teachability derives from arrogance and rigid skepticism. But it also derives, low teachability also derives from naivete and gullibility. High teachability, on the other hand, derives from a balance between healthy skepticism and an open-minded willingness to learn and change. So we don't want rigidly skeptical people, okay, that don't have an open mind at all, and we don't want naive and gullible people that will accept everything they're told. We want to, we want to, we want to strike a balance between these two modes. This is called a teachability bell curve. Okay, and down here is uh, the mental state of the student, whether they are, and it goes from arrogance, cynicism, skeptical nature, uh, a teacher, a student, and then up to being trusting, then being gullible, and then being outright naive. 